Hey everyone, how's it going? Good to see everyone back um, for a Friday afternoon stream over here. Uh, it's been an interesting one, that's for sure. Usually am streaming with the Mads right now, but uh, he is somewhere, somewhere to be found. We got our dog Millie over here hanging out, sleeping, snoozing, living life. So new dog cam in action 24-7. <laughs> Over there, eh? Aiden, Naxos, formal, good to see ya. Um, yeah, so we are going to continue working on some updates this week over to um, my, my Cadence app. And last week, we tried to add some database work, which we got pretty far on. And this week, I wanted to do some visualization of that data with some charts and graphs. So I figure, why not? Um, do that live and I haven't added charts and graphs for a while I usually use sync fusion for stuff, but we're gonna use micro charts, which is seems to be active ish uh, Which is good. So this like moved. I don't know things like moved around I'm I'm happy. It looks like Ed Lamanaco is taking it over which is awesome that someone is taking this over and it's moved into a whole org and things like that uh, I'll put a link over here in the, the show. notes. It's pretty cool. Aloise, uh, a long time ago, made this library, and it's cool to see it updated, basically. Like, kind of keep going um, and doing stuff. So it's real exciting about that. So that's what we're going to do today. Hope everyone's doing well, and we're just going to see if the dog's just going to sit here the entire time. A little pancake. little pancake. All right. <laughs> I don't know. The life of a dog. Today we're drinking a Target pomegranate dragon fruit sparkling water from Good and Gathering, which is a Target brand. Pretty delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, cool. So microcharts is a Skia Sharp uh, based charting solution, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a great community package that, like I said, I think uh, apparently Ed is is doing. So shout out to Ed from Grand Rapids, Michigan for taking this over, it looks like. That's cool. Uh, bup, 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 bup. It's pretty cool because it has all these different charts and graphs and it's interactive and it can animate and do all bunch of stuff, which is really, really cool. What we want to do is display cadence over time pretty much inside of here. That's sort of our goal. So any of these charts and graphs will be great. Uh, it would be cool to do a colorized one where if, you know, I guess up and down, I, I don't really know, but I think any of these will be pretty solid. The reason I'm going to go with this is also because if we go into the project, oh, where's my zoom at? Where's my zoom at? at? There it is. How come a zoom? It's not options. Oh, it's a run on startup. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. Anyways, if we look over here, we got, I'm using this color picker control and it is using an older version of Skia Sharp views. So we'll see if that has issues or not, but um, it's, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I'm already using Skia Sharp in the app, which is why I'm doing that in the, the Spillman at uh, Spillman color picker Xamarin Let's see if that shows up on the github yep this one up oh. we've been updated in a while but it works it's basically this color picker control which is super cool and you can put anything in there and I went through like all the color pickers in the world uh Nexilo says micro charts are great to for fast implementation but lacks MVVM support and low customization is very annoying Yes. Uh, actually, you know, I did a bunch of Googling, uh, of course. And funnily enough, I was looking at a bunch of the different blogs and Aloise did one a long time ago on micro charts. And then I did one on um, Syncfusion a long time ago and how I use it in all my apps and a bunch of stuff now. And now I use it in Animal, Animal uh, Island Tracker for really nice visualization. So. It does have very nice MVVM support, that's for sure. Well, luckily, I'm totally cool breaking MVVM pattern. Uh, that is for sure. Um, so we're gonna give it a go. 
Well, let's first see if it breaks my stuff. I'm gonna manage nougat packages. And we're just gonna go for the, I was going through the nougat earlier. And I don't know, I mean, this one uses a new Askia Sharp Views over here from a month ago. I'm gonna trust that there's okay backwards compatibility. I don't know. I don't know. Um, else we could try to go like, you know, uh, try to go update the, maybe do a pull request to my other library I'm using. But let's do, should I do stable? Let's see what's in the micro charts. I think it said, Releases. First release of 1.0 is going out on Nougat. You can find them here. The only one that didn't change is microcharts.forms. Okay, interesting. Um, if I change title color. Looks like like working through some stuff. So if I look here, I don't think there's any big difference between this uses 2820 and this uses 28202. Class name of entry change to chart entry oh got it that's a, the difference i guess what you could do is you could always do open and boog it and then you can do an api diff boop let's see if this puppy works come on frank Come on, Frank's back end. There we go. So definitely some things changed. <laughs> Removed, min, bar height, draw areas, entries, entries. Like a few things, nothing crazy, but it looks like mostly meth. It's a few other properties were added, point chart, things like that. Um, let's see here. So let's just install. Let's get the let's get those latest bits. Screw it. You know what I mean? You might as well go for it. Boop. Why not? Why not? Know about the ski of sharpness the the ski of sharp may bite me we might have to go backwards in time which again we'll, we'll see if that's a problem or not um, or go make a pull request to the other library to bump version numbers which may be the, uh, the option as well because see if we look over here what we'll see is that we have the micro charts see ski of sharp views oh interesting Oh, oh, it bumped it. Oh, interesting. Okay. So this was using 1.6 something, but now obviously it's going to use the newer one. So 1.0 to 2.0 means a breaking change, but hard to say. So let's add a new view. Content page will say um, ride history page, history details page. And that's what we're going to put in there. And what I'm gonna do for this app is we are going to make this really easy to debug. I'm gonna say new ride history page details, boom. And then what we're gonna do in the code behind is we'll say ride, ride. And then for this, let's just do yeah, I don't even need to do this, but I can say and binding context equals ride. 
this dock ride. At least have our ride in there and whatnot. And we'll just do like if for for dummy data, we'll just do this dot ride equals new ride. And then we'll do let's fill this in just so we have data. So average we'll say 58, that's pretty slow. Date time, we'll say equals date time dot UTC now. And then we'll say elapsed ticks equals, I don't know, something. Uh, rotation data rotations. And then, yeah, at least get something on something on the board. Um, I don't even know if we'll have ride. I think what we'd end up having here is inside the class, we'll do a class of ride, uh, ride display. And then this will be a public um, interray data points. And here we'll just do public ride ride like that. I'm gonna need this, and then what we'll do is we'll do if ride equals ride, and then we'll do a public. Oh yeah, we didn't even need to do that. Okay, that's cool. We'll just do ride ride ride. If ride equals null, ride equals at, and we'll do new ride display and then we'll say ride equals ride and then we'll say data point equals new int array then we need to do a bunch of data points so we'll do like 100 50 80 i mean ideally this would be like 100 90 80 95, 100, 110, 15, 100. I'm just gonna put a bunch of data points in here. Something like that. So ideally we'll have some data to work with. What are all these little things? Fix that. Boom. Cool. Alright. So this we have some data points, and I don't know exactly like where the data points on the thing will work. But what we should be able to do is click debug and then see this in real time without even doing anything. Should be nice. Let me just look at this dog, just hanging out. Just hanging out all day. So let's see. We look over at the micro charts. Where's the wiki? Oh, there's chart entry. Oh, I see. Interesting. So there's entries. So I turn them into. I think I want a line chart. Do I want a line chart or do I want a point chart? Nope. I think a line chart. Bar chart? No. Donut chart? No. Line chart? Probably. Pie chart? No. Point chart? No. Radial chart? Very cool. <laughs> uh, oh, radial gauge. That's cool. Bum, bum. Yeah, I think definitely a line chart is what I want. Uh, cool. Right, let's take a look at this. Line chart. It's gonna be like create a line chart in the thing, right? Build failed. Oh my gosh. Uh, what happened? Oh no. Give it null. Okay, 
This should work. So we're gonna create this, but then all the data points are gonna be, oh, I see, that's interesting. It's like, so what I could do is I could say like get color and then the colors could be, how does the Peloton app do it? One Peloton. over here my membership So I did two days ago. Boop. Okay, so all they do is if it's there's an average, and if you're above the average, then it's red. Yesterday. Also, it's like orange. Oh. So just, just do it, do it, make the dream, dream come true. Come true. Jen Swoste, thank you so much for that. Tier one subscription. Holy cram, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Hope you're having a great day. Um, okay, well, this is what we want to do, I guess. So basically we would say if it's Oh my gosh. Just just do it, do it. Make your dream your dream come true. Come true. Naxalos, thank you so much for your Twitch Prime sub. Oh my goodness. First one on Twitch. Oh my goodness. If you have Prime, you can link your your Prime account over to your Twitch account, and then you can do stuff. It's cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Super appreciate that. We make donations to charities all throughout the year. So, right, so what we're gonna do is we wanna put some bubbles. Gonna put some bubbles. <laughs> no, you didn't interrupt anything. You interrupted nothing. Uh, so we're gonna do some gridage, and we're gonna do columns of three columns, okay? Rowage, and then we're gonna do auto and then star. And really what we want is, I think I have it in here, let me look. I would like, pretty much, no, not this one, this is the old gross settings. Where's the new hot settings, settings. Frame. Okay, cool. So we do have this in here. Cool. I'll put this in here. So I should have something like this. Why is this not um? This should really be like a, a, a style, huh? Don't have a card. B card. B card. What about A card? Um. Why do I have things called A and B? I don't know. I do not know. Um, I guess I could use this. This must be a B card. Okay, so let's do a. Guess a style of B card. I don't. I I I, did, I have no idea why I named anything anything. That's, that's that's the honest truth to all of you. I have like A's and B's, and I'm just like oh, I don't know what any of this means. Um. Well, ideally, I'm gonna have three frames in here, like so, and then this would be a grid dot column one a grid dot column two and just to be consistent let's do this i have a challenge for me oh my gosh i don't know and if you if you succeed i owe you a beer huh. how do i get the position of a tapped event mm. a position of a tapped event that's a tricky one um, I think that you can use you 
community toolkit. Collection view each row in the collection has a more icon. Oh, yeah, okay, so there's a few ways that you can do that uh, to actually do that easier. So, actually, if you look at in our samples code, um, so if, you, if you're tapping on a view, that's really easy, um, especially if you have a more icon. So, if you're like, I need to tap on that more icon specifically you can do something like this, these view helpers, and get absolute bounds. So when you touch it, when you touch a view, you can use this method to pass it in and then get an absolute rectangle. In fact, I document that over in, in docs.microsoft slash Xamarin slash essentials slash share. And you can find that documented right here in the presentation location. Now for a generic touch event, I don't know, you might wanna look at whatever they're doing in this in this stuff here. I don't know if they have, uh, I don't know what their, I don't know what all their touch events and arguments are in here. There's a lot of stuff, but I don't know if there's like bounds or not. So you might wanna look at this. They have a lot more, look at all this, so much stuff. Um, I don't know if they have a bounding box, but at least that will hopefully give you like something to look at. Cool. Okay, cool. So we're back over here. We're back in the thing. Hopefully that's helpful in general. We're going to wrap this whole thing in a scroll view because that's for funsies. So ideally, you want some padding of like 10, boop. And then what we wanna do is, oh, interesting. Those are cut off. Yeah, that's better. Okay, cool. So I do I want to display some data here. There's need like two. Yeah, I just need like two. Oop. Cool. So what we'll do is inside of here, we're gonna do a we'll do a style app app static resource. Of, uh, I guess it's going to be a B large label. And then here we'll say text equals, I guess, a uh, ride dot. Ride dot average. Ideally, that just shows up in there. Boop. And then we do like horizontal option center and then vertical center. Boop. And then probably we're actually gonna use like a stack layout. And then we'll do this. We'll just actually put this all in here. I, think I do need that. This would be like small. And then this would be average. And probably ideally we're gonna have another auto here too. 
and this will be like like that. And then we're gonna do grid dot row one. Same thing. We're just gonna slap them in there. And we're gonna do a. Oh, you know what? I don't need to put that. I'll put the date in the title bar, which will totally be in here. So let's do that. So this will be like statistics. So we'll have uh, that, and then we're just gonna copy and paste this into here. And this will be call it all. Elapsed in like total time. So it'll be like rotations. Boop. And then we'll need one more, which will be like time. And this is going to actually be not this, but what we should do is do a public string display date and public uh, string display time in here. And then as this comes in, oh, actually we can just do this. This would be great. Uh, new, new time span dot, I think it's like time span dot from ticks, ride dot ticks. Uh, to, to string. I, mean, I always forget how to do a two string thing. Anyway, so hopefully that's helpful. Gens. How uh, many two string time span formatting? C sharp. Give me the stuff. I'm pretty sure I need mm. Mm. Do it. Investigate. So I'm going to do display date. And I'll do ride dot to local time dot to short date time. And I guess probably I want to do like a probably actually do want to have this in here. Short time. I guess that's when we did it. There we go, cool. Okay, so we're gonna need to Do this. And then ideally now we can come in and put some stuff here. Actually, you know what we should do is uh, cancel. We should do
Okay, so all we gotta do is this. At least give us the infos. And then we push a page. I'm pretty sure we want to do. This should work. Let's go back to the ride page, just close to the right. I probably need to also get this one. There's data points. I don't know if those are the right data points. Okay, so let's go here. And then ideally we had rotations, but also we had. Display time. Oop. Well, that didn't work. That's because I need to do get right. No, that's not right. Oh, that's right, right? I'm gonna do a thing here. From ticks, elapsed ticks should be a um, thousand. Might not be enough. <laughs> oh, I guess it's ten thousand. So that's time. Time span from ticks okay let's see if this oh oh it's because it's not in the ride Duh. there we go okay cool so that works Boop. that is not what i wanted <laughs> that's not what i wanted at all um So what I should do is date time now. Add minutes thirty minus, and then you can do dot ticks. There we go. So I think for a time span, I think what we'll do is we'll end up doing from here. We'll do something similar to what we did earlier, which would be. So do time span, we'll do dot total minutes. Yep. And then we'll do colon I'm like creating a bunch of time spans, which is like not ideal at all. That's yeah, seconds. There we go. And that's better. So that'll be hours, blah, 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 blah. So that'd be good. Let's see if that works. Then we can do a chart, which is what we wanted to do the whole time, but James is just rambling on. And the dog is just sitting there. I need to get a longer USB cable so I can put like the camera right over. She was over here on the left side of me, now she's on the right side of me. There we go, that looks good. Look at that. Nice. Time total. What a total would be like. Rotations. Average. 
Hey, Sam, how's it going? Rediscover the Humanizer library. Very cool. Yes, it is. I do like Humanizer a lot. I've used it in quite a few of my applications. That's for sure. Very nice. Uh, we're going to do a title here. Binding to display date. Yeah, Humanizer is pretty rad. Did you end up using JSON, BSON, or just storing the data? Great question. And I'm glad that you asked. Um, so I haven't decided yet. I also was looking into I was also looking into Hey Lachlan, how's it going? Good morning. Um, I was looking also at using the binary formatter. Um, I haven't decided. The binary formatter, people say don't to use at all. It's not safe, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, I have the data. Um, but I didn't know if this would be better or, or not better or not. You know what I mean? But I, I can't even tell really how to use it because all the data is like, don't do it. But I think so. I think I could just use the binary formatter. No. I don't know what it serializes out to, but I was hoping I could just serialize it. Yeah, I didn't make a decision. I, I should. But then I was thinking, yeah, maybe I'll use this. Thoughts? I don't know. I don't even know how to do it. It doesn't even tell me how to serialize stuff. Overview. Yeah, it's like, don't use it. And there's like all these other things. I don't know. I would like to, I would like to know. I definitely don't want to, I still need to talk to Frank. I haven't talked to Frank in a little bit. So I definitely want to talk to Frank. The, the worst decisions are those not being made. In my app, I'm using SQLite to sort time series data interval intraday data for financial markets currently millions of records oh my gosh sqlite is pretty sweet that is very very true you need the historical data for all of them interesting interesting i, think I won't do a there we go micro charts chart view Yeah, I, I know. I should just do it that way. I mean, I'm open to doing it either way. It doesn't really matter. Because ideally, they're not going to tap on it that much or do very much, but... I know. I don't... I don't know. I'm... I'm hit or miss here. I don't know what I want to do. I need to talk to Frank and get his expert opinion. I used to work on that, but... With stacks of spatial data... I've stumbled upon uh, across a fun fact. Our phones are actually quite powerful <laughs> doing calculate. I've, I've heard that the phones are powerful, but I don't know if I believe it or not. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so there's a chart view. And then how do you... Um, how do you do stuff in here? So the, the line chart, chart view. Oh, I guess I could look at that. Entries, chart views, line chart, chart view, donut. Okay, so you just, oh. Oh, interesting. Oh, oh, okay. So then you would say, chart, okay. Oh, well, that is weird. Okay, but this will be, 
I see what you're saying about the MVVM part of it. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Lachlan said, I tried serialization to one field, but that made the database huge. I ended up putting files on disk with file pass in the SQLite. Interesting. Um, only problem with that is if they uninstall the app, reinstall the app, and if it's cache data, it's fine. It's not the worst. I mean, I'm pretty sure that you're saying that people use it more than their phones just for YouTube. Impossible. Let me look at my time currently on, well, today's a pretty light day. Look at my week. Number one app. Oh, here we go. Number, let me pull up my webcam here. Okay, so number one app, Edge. Two hours and 30 minutes this week. Edge browser. Number two, YouTube. And then messages, maps, Gmail, Eufy security, and then weather. What else next? Instagram, 11 minutes in the last week. That's pretty good. YouTube Studio, 10. Pocket Cast, 9, although I do listen to a lot in the background. Stocks. Redfin, Echo B, and then the App Store. Nine minutes. Well, last week. Ooh, that's an interesting view. Last week. Doesn't change. Look at this. Last week. YouTube. Number one. Four hours and two minutes. What am I doing with my life? Then Edge, Eufy Security, Messages, Maps. Interesting. Okay, so we have a chart. We're going to need a chart here. So let's apparently stop this. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do this, which when we create this, let's do a public ride display. And then let's have this take in the ride. I guess I don't need these data points here. Ride equals ride. Okay. Let's just do a public get. I don't really need data points. Oh. Oh, yeah. We're just going to use data points for now. Oh, yes. Because we're just going to do this. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do here, then we're going to do a public. Oh, my gosh. Share my screen. <laughs> you just don't want to stare at me the entire time? Thanks. <laughs> okay, so all I did was I changed it so I take the ride in here, which uh, I'll need because that has the data in it. But for this demo purposes, we're going to create a public. What is it? A public ah, um, line chart with entries. Interesting. So, I guess, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So then we'll do new chart equals new line chart. We'll say for each. Oh, this isn't going to work very well, huh? Because I need to do, okay, I'll just do this. We'll also take in the int array data points. I, I won't need to do this in the. We're not going to need those data points in the future, but for demo purposes, we're going to use them. Oh, I guess I don't even need that then. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. And then here we'll just do this. Bop, 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 bop. There we go. There we go. Cat videos versus numerical nonlinear optimizations. Like that. 
I like that. So we're going to say for each var, um, um, uh, I guess it would be, let's just do data points, jazz select, a new chart entry. And then I guess it needs a color, a label, label, color value, color label, it's a string. Well, how does it know how to display it? How does it know? What? Entries. How does it know? I don't understand how the chart knows the number. Line size, line mode. It's like a value? Little text size. Yeah, how does it, how does it know what to display? How does it know? I need to know. Um, data. Label value is oh, interesting. Chart entry constructor takes a parameter of values. Oh, fascinating. Fascinating. Okay, so you do that. Oh, and then there's a, yeah, so here I would just want to do like uh, color equals, dun, dun, dun. what did the Peloton app do? It said... No. Okay, so if, let's do, well, we'd want the average actually, which is, oh, actually in the right, if, if the S is less than or equal to ride dot average, we'll do up here, we'll say var low equals, it's gonna need an S K, Color. Bum, 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 bum. Right, so let's see R R G B in here. Oh, life! Thank you so much for the follow. that var high equals and there's we can, we can always get better on this you know what i mean we don't have to necessarily make it awesome right now but it, it should ideally you know let's get color boom and then if it's if it's less than the average, then we'll say return low else high. There we go. And we're not gonna even have any data on it. What does it matter about? Chart. Uh, 
The power of Link. Okay, cool. So we have that. The average is 58, which is not correct, because we'll say the average here is going to be 80. Cool. All right, let's see what this does. Dun, 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 dun. Ch -ch 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 -uh. Making charts and they're gonna be awesome. Hopefully, yeah. Bam, <laughs> bam. Is there is like a legacy chart and a non-legacy chart? Whoa, there's a chart right there. Uh, and it's it's up there. Whoa, cool. Amazing. Um We did it. We shipped it. It's in the wrong place. Bump, bump. I just thought of the power of Link to the tune of Power of It's the power of love. Um Back to the Future? Right? Wrong? Yeah. Yes. Grid.row one. Grid.column span three. Boom! Amazing. There's the power of that. There's the power of that. Yeah, I don't think that they're gonna. I don't think it's actually, no, that's not correct. He's, he sings on the thing. He does the thing. Look at this. We made a chart, people. We made a chart. Um, oh, and that should definitely be inside of a, should definitely be inside of a frame. That's cool. It does all this blending automatically. Well, that's so cool. Um, now... The question is, I probably don't really want. It's not really like it's not gonna be interactive, right? Because that's the cool part about the Sync Fusion ones. He has like all the interaction and all the craziness in it. Um, but we do need to put this in a in a frame. You can modify the range of the data so that all the data points are not bunched at the top. Oh, really? That's cool. Let's put this here. Boop, boop. And we'll do a binding, uh, no. Boop. And then uh, I'm gonna do a margin here. And because we kind of want this, you know, what is the. Oh, interesting. Why is there? Oh, it's like not actually end to end. That's fine. We're going to put numbers and stuff up there too. We're going to put some numbers because we're going to need like a min and a max. So actually what we'll want to do is we want to do like, um, public string max. Yeah, I guess you'd want it to be, um, min and max. And then what you want to do is you want to do like, you can do like max, Equals. Yeah, because we look at the Peloton one, they do go all the way down to zero. It looks like it's like an average. I guess they do go all the way up to the top. 
So I guess we do want min and max. I guess we want like max. This would be uh, data. That's easy. I like that there's a min and a max. And then same thing, min equals data points. Oh, returns the minimum value in a sequence of int. Yeah. That's amazing. So we get the min and the max, and we'll want to place those somewhere. And you're saying that I can also adjust other things in here. Uh... Line mode. I think straight is what we'd want. Is animated? Sure, why not? There's a line mode, a line size. Uh, can I set those in? I definitely should be able to. Oh no, they're on the chart. Yeah, uh, so yeah, see that's the problem is like, the chart view just has a chart and the chart has the data for what it should be. Whereas like the chart view should have stuff on here, but it doesn't because yeah, there's no, there's not, there's not a lot of XAML going on there. That's kind of a bummer town, um, but is what it is. I could create the chart in code. I mean, I could do, for example, um, you could do, um, instead of binding it to a chart, you could bind it to, so you could do this, you could do, Micro charts, chart. Now what you could do is you could do a chart. No? Then you can do a linear chart, line chart. And then in here, now then what we could do is we could say um, uh, entries is a binding to chart entries like that. And that's looking a little bit better because now we'll have full control over this instead of in the code behind. And that is what we want. And this will just be a I enumerable of chart entry and then say chart entries equals ends. Oops. That's a little bit better there. So now we're only just creating the data points. You should set the max and min in the line chart constructor. Let's take a look here. That would be a bummer if so. New line chart. There is nothing in the line chart constructor. I'm assuming it's like the legacy line chart constructor, which no, it's not there. Interesting. 
Well, here, now we have this line chart. So ideally, there would be a min value, which is here. That's cool. And that is a something. Let's look. Min value sets the minimum value. Um, I think it's okay, no? Sets the global margin. Let's just try this out. We'll do. I so if you look at like how the Peloton app does it, we probably don't. Oops. What? No. 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 Oh, bummer town. Oh, come on now. Come on, fam. What? No. Ah. Oh, come on, dude. That is a shame. We're undoing it here. So yeah, it does need a little bit of MVVM love. It needs a little XAML uh, love, I guess, in here. That's a bummer town times 28. That is a bummer town. Okay, let's... Back this out. Yeah, so probably really, like we could in theory probably set the uh, height request of this puppy to like 200 or something. Or ideally, we would do like that's what we'd want. Let's try this out. Ba -ba 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 yeah, because I think I want the max to be the max and the min to be the min. You know what I mean? And then what we can do is on the bottom, we'll put this in a grid as well. That's a bummer. I thought we were going to definitely get it. Oh, no. Um, how do I make it so there's not things? Uh, I don't want the little balls on there. I basically don't want those little balls on there that are on there, but maybe I can't remove them. What's the difference between spline and... Oh, I guess I do want spline. I see. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so there is definitely a lack of control that we're seeing here, that is for sure. So, uh... That is for sure. I guess this is a blob. Just a blob over here. Blob. now right there yes how can i help you i woke you up from your slumber that wasn't that wasn't smart can you show what you have in your views code behind everything everything well the, the code behind here is actually pretty straightforward for this page it's just some ride data and I have this display ride. And what that does is that is basically figuring out colors, describing what the chart should be like, et cetera, et cetera. Really just turn the camera, face to the camera. 
Um, that's it, really, just some display data. So this could, this could be a view model, for example. That's all it is. This is, this is really just a view model. And the code behind is not really doing much. It's so like, in theory, you would just do this. So watch. You would do like... That's all you would do is you do this. You take this. This is going to another file, or like, I'm only ever going to use it here, so I'm just going to put it here. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And then, yeah, it's mostly it. Just creating the view model, that's it. And then what you can do is you can come up here and you can say, um, X data type, and then you can do, you know, um, just do a views. Views, ride details, view model, something like that. Yeah, that's all it is. Not much in here, so ride history details page, ride history details view model. This is doing stuff, so it's just going to be simple display data, nothing special. And I'm not going to update it, so it's just displaying static data. And this is just for design time data, so since I don't have the data I'm passing in, I'm just going to create the new view model. That's it. That's the code behind. Done. It's pretty much creating the binding context. That's it. Um, so, oh, we wanted to do this. We wanted to do some mins and maxes. What are you doing, Millie? <laughs> Zero, slumpy tail doing. What's he doing? What's he doing, girl? Sitting there. What are you doing? What are you doing? You hanging out? Live coding? Okay, cool. So I think what I want to do here is, well, one, I want to do like. <laughs> She's really over here. So you definitely want to do something like that. It's kind of weird. Does this thing have like a... I think that the... I don't know why you have a margin on that. I think setting a margin to zero is real funky to be a default. This. What is the best practice for code behind? Let's do a clip. Maybe I'll do this. Let's uh, turn on the dog cam for a second. Let's do a clipping. Here we go. So answer your question. All right, we got a question in the chat room, which is, what is the best practice for code behind? Well, if you're using MVVM, you know, depends on what you want to do. I'm a believer of you have as much or as little code behind as you possibly want in your application. If you want to have all view models and want to be in a completely separate project and you want to be super fully testable, go for it. That's totally up to you. Uh, if you want it to be everything in your code behind and no view models, Super awesome, go to town. I think MVVM with code behind, it's kind of up to you. Normally when I'm interacting with the user interface, then I don't mind necessarily like a tap event or a touch event, then calling into my view model to do something or a back button because it's UI events. I don't need to test if the UI did it. It's the important part is like what happens after that, right? So that way your view model really doesn't know anything about the view at all. So. To me, that's what's sort of important about how much code behind, how little code behind, it's up to you. I'm more of a believer of 
uh, if my view model doesn't need anything in its constructor and I'm not sharing it with any other pages in my Xamarin Forms or UWP or WPF app, then I'll just create it in the XAML. That sounds great. I'll just put the binding context right there and I never have to worry about it and I'm good. Else, if it does need some additional data that's being passed to and from it, then I'll just create it in the code behind. And my code behind will literally be binding context equals new view model because that's what's important. The, the, the testability of the view model is what's important. It's not necessarily the UI bits and pieces of it unless you're doing UI testing. And in that case, then you would be doing UI testing, not view model based testing with something like X unit or N unit. So to me, you know, some people think clean code means that it's 100% abstract in its own thing. There's interfaces everywhere. That's awesome. Sometimes you just need to crush code and and push it out. Um, so it's totally up to you. I do think that using view models keeps it a little bit cleaner in general. But in the case of my app, my cadence, I'm doing tons of Bluetooth stuff and lots of events, and it's very UI driven and heavy. So I'm just putting it all in the UI. Anyways, that's my answer. Now back to the code. I like to do the separate so then I can uh, put it in a put it in a thing. Man, I don't know what I want this chart and graph to look like. I don't know why it is not. Like, I don't know why the. That's interesting too. Yeah, so I don't know why this thing is doing this. Oh, interesting. What? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna remove that and work. I don't know. Uh, I guess I can, right, let me do this again. One more time. You are welcome. You are welcome. I don't know. Uh, everyone's different, so it's definitely up to you and your life. Okay, so there's a big. Oh, it's because I have this padding of zero. Okay, that's zero padding. Cool. I think like it doesn't seem to actually have the padding on top. That looks good. So ideally then you could actually do margin of like negative 10, negative 12. Maybe I don't have it in a card. I think not. I think not. I think you're all correct. And I'm going to put it in a grid and get rid of that. Because I think that'll just be better for everybody involved in the situation. Oh man. Oh. How come this has a. Mmm. That's frustrating. Ah, uh, background color of the chart. Come on. Hmm. All right, fine. That's 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 very annoying because the chart background is actually a color in the chart and not in this thing. So I actually want it to be the same color as the background. Ah. Okay, so that's super annoying. Super annoying. So what that means we need to do is we need to do something like we need to override on appearing and disappearing, and then we need to say we need to get I 
that current. Oops. Whenever it changes, so if the user has it open, we have a helper file called the theme. And the current theme is Dark, then we're gonna say so we're gonna do a new background color. I'm gonna say This and we're going to say bar. All right, so then we're going to need to do is oh, I guess I can do color. Else color will equal normal background color. And then say that the uh, ride history detail view finding context dot chart dot color background color equals then we'll do a new sk color and then we'll do can I just pass it a color that'd be really nice but I totally can't so do color dot r color dot b Color dot G R G B. It's a byte. Ah. Wow, 
Why is that complicated? to system dot drawing dot color drawing color equals color dot to then we can use because they are the same and then you can use color dot system To int. Aha! Oh, come on. What? No, come on. You int. What? To you int. Wow, we built it in. There's a SK. What? Okay, hold on. I am trying to go that. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that'd be easy if so. <laughs> Let's look. Uh, color dot to sk color on Xamarin Forms. Oh my gosh. Well then, hero of the day, Lachlan. Well, Jens, also what I said is if you that first link I gave you also um, also if you're just like tapping on a view, you can just get the views area. Too, if you don't probably don't need the actual touch area, you probably need just like the thing that it touched. So, for example, on on share, for example, see how um, it doesn't actually show you. But basically what it does, it finds the bounding system rectangle. Yeah, but aren't you touching something? Aren't you touching an image? Are you touching anywhere on a block? On a box? You could use Skia Sharp or you could use... I don't know. I, I would maybe add to like, let's see. Forms, touch, area, event. Yeah, if you're tapping an image, use the thing I just sent you, this thing. All you gotta do is, look at this. Like, if you tap the image, this will do it. This will get you the absolute bounding box of that image on the screen. So like for the share, and look at this. You can even do like binding to yourself relative. Like you wanna do this. And this will get you the binding, the box of where it's exactly, and it gives you a rectangle back too. It figures out everything for you. That, that's pretty simple. I think that's what you want. Give that a try first. It's super, it's an X and a Y and a width and a height. It gives you everything you want. So, Cause that way, what it does is when you tap on, a, on an iPad, it shows you a little pop-up right on top of it. So I think that's what you want um, as well. So the reason I did the set, set chart background is I wanna be able to do this, which is unappearing. I want to do set chart background and I want to go and I want to set um, the requested theme, which would be app.current requested theme. So that way we like set it when we start it up. So that should give us the ability to update the color of the chart. Let's see if it actually did it or not. Yeah, if you tap the image, that, that should give you the, the bounding box of the image inside of it. Give that a go. Because that's what we do inside of like a share button. It's dog. So funny. Yeah, it should give you the bounding box inside of it. Give that a try. Although it would be a good feature request to like get that back from the toolkit. So you can definitely ask them. There we go, look at that. Look at that. 
All right. Now what we do want to do is what we want to do is do something like um, style. Put it somewhere now. Why is that time all messed up? That's not right. Let's just see if this is like, oh, I wonder if it's underneath the chart. Yeah, there we go. So I think I like that this is like not, oh, there's total. Oh, interesting. So, they, so Peloton does best average. I think what I would do is I think I have a better idea. Let's do auto. Let's do let's just do two. And then let's do Average cadence. I think I'm just do average. There's average. Then there's they show best. And then you do max. And probably you'd want to do like a So then what we're going to do is we're going to do grid uh, row on this will be row two.
Boop. Yep. And then what we'll do is we'll do set a time. They do average best. Rotations, and then again, I think it would be yeah, total rotations. And then, oh, that's interesting. This, okay, I think I'll remove this padding on anything. And this one, this last one will be, it's kind of like a dashboard, right? It's like, blah, 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 blah. And then I really think that probably this will be. It probably shouldn't be like that. This should probably be like. Should be whatever's left over. So we'd want this to be like 0.2. Point six, and this one would be. Oops, did I do it wrong? There we go, and. That would be that, and this will be like that all caps time, display time, micro, medium, Oop. little dashboard. There we go, it's pretty good. And then this, this needs to be like row three, and then boop. Awesome. And then what we'll do is we'll do, um, Yeah, what they do is they put all these and this will be horizontal end. Boop. This will be horizontal end, vertical end. Boop, boop. Yeah, and ideally there's like some minutes that are in here, but like that's pretty decent. And I think here we'll do, I guess what I would do probably, and this would probably be better, dot rows would be and that, and we'll, we'll not hack it, I guess. We'll do grid dot, uh, Row definitions, and this one will be grid dot row two. And let's do that's pretty good. And then this, we'll just get rid of this. Boom. It's pretty good overall. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. 
I see what they do. They do um min and max. Okay, so if I did interesting. Okay, so you can do the min and max. So let's let's actually do that. I think you're correct. I was looking at the Peloton chart. And what they do is they do like not zero and not the max, but like plus or minus 10. So let's do that. So you were right. Hello, hello. We're just finishing adding some charts, which is pretty rad, to my Cadence app. So yeah, this one should have min value. And let's do, um, min equals min minus 10. If that is less than zero, then zero, else min minus 10. And then max value will be max uh, plus 10. Just give it some room, I guess. We'll see what that looks like. Oop, see what that looks like. So many clips. Oh, dog got excited. Dog got excited. Oh, coming over. Coming for us. When I do the pats, it's like she thinks that something's happening. What's going on? Puppy paws. Puppy. <laughs> Where'd you go? Hello. Oh, she's like, please stop coding. She's like, I want to hang. There you go. That's cool. Yeah. So, yes. Um, so, it's actually interesting. I don't know if this exactly. There, that's the perfect spot for the back of her. Um. <laughs> yeah, they love the attention. So I think that uh, 65 is the min. That's what this is saying here. It's like, oh, the minimum is 65. Um, it's really interesting. They have like best, best, like they actually tell you there. And that's like average, the average line. I don't know how helpful the chart and graph is, but it's there. I think this data is useful, but it'll kind of be on the, won't necessarily be on the other one, but. Okay. I think that's it. I think we did it. Kind of good, ship it. I mean, it's, it's a chart and graph. Um, I could probably make this do like, uh, row spacing zero. Snug it up a little bit. Could probably even do like a margin. Best resource to learn XAML? Hmm. There's a bunch of good stuff in Microsoft Learn. So if you're interested in doing like Xamarin stuff, boom. But I do love just like this full XAML book, basically. So give you everything. You, you need to know right here these like different parts. There's a whole whole thing. It basically teaches you all the stuff. XAML overviews, all lots of good stuff there. Pretty much. Matt, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, so that looks good. 
Yeah, there's tons of videos. I got videos on my YouTube as well. All sorts of good stuff. Um, thank you so much for the follow as well. Um, I think this is good. No, I don't know. I mean, it's something like that doesn't exist in the app. View helper. Are you talking about my thing? Are you talking about this? This thing? Well, a good sample is, is right here. Uh, so, for example, I'll show you. Please hold. This is from Xamarin Essentials. This is just this is just code that you can add into your application. So, if you actually go into sample, samples, views, share. right here then you can like you know go to the request command which is in the view model yeah I literally copied and pasted it from the thing but you can kind of see it in here basically that's one way of doing it for sure and see how I get the This looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Not bad. Yeah, take a look at it. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit by sort of doing here. Yeah, that's gonna mess everything up. It's okay, it's okay. There's a grid dot one. So that way, like, these are just a little bit not as tucked in, I guess. That's my idea. I should get rid of this padding. I don't know, I want that padding. Yeah. Boom. It gets all this information from the bike. Uh, yeah, no, what it does, so... Um, there's a little sensor, basically, that you can connect up to your bike. This right here, this cadence sensor. So actually, if you go to mycadence.app, it basically connects up to this little Bluetooth sensor. So I have it like on a on a spin bike. So the bike that I own, is this indoor spin bike that you'll see here. There you go. Hey, Fluff. Hey, Titan, thanks for the follow. So what you'll see here is, um, is uh, there's me. I did a ride when I was young, and I bought this bike. Oh, there's Peloton on there. And I talk about how I did it and how I made it and all this other stuff and comparing bikes and blah, 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 blah. How I put it together. And then, yeah, I bought this little sensor to put on the crank arm. And in the Peloton app, it shows you the cadence, but if you're doing like Apple Fitness Plus or other things, um, I actually have this whole thing. So there's actually all sorts of good stuff in here. 
So I actually talk about eventually that I made, you know, my stream timer and all this other stuff. So here's my cadence right here. So there's my cadence. Basically, it just like shows you all this stuff. It's free. I made a whole video of it, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it's super good. It's a long read. It's a long read. So anyways, this this app, it will it'll connect to this Bluetooth sensor and then it in real time will um, will display the data. In fact, I have a video right here. Look at this. I talk about it. There's the sensor. There's me on my bike. And then, yeah, basically scan for a sensor. It's not pulling a lot of data. If you see the data here, it, it's basically just how many rotations it's going. It doesn't pull anything else besides that. So, um, and that's it. That's it. Did I design the logo myself? No, it's an emoji. It's just a emoji that I've got. I'm using Blazor for my blog. No, this is Ghost. So this is Ghost. That was a Ghost backer on Patreon like a long time ago. So this is a Ghost ghost hosted platform. I don't host all my own stuff. That's I don't have a whole CRM. That'd be too much for me to handle. Anyways, that's that app. Yeah. That's my cadence. So now someone, um, somebody, uh, requested that, like I have some d d basically data, uh, for his historical purposes. Cause they're like doing some training for medical purposes. So I, I wanted to create a list and then I'll kind of have to do that next is basically I'm now storing each ride and then you can like tap on history and get and get the, the history of all your rides basically in here. That's the idea at least. So I just wanted to create this chart and graph of all the things I need to do a real ride and then actually pipe real data in here and then have it show up. But that'll be for another day because it's been two hours. So I'm gonna get out of here folks. Thank you so much for hanging out. And we did some charts. Look at that. If you need a chart, micro charts. There you go. This is the back of my dog. It's just hanging out in here. Hope that everyone had a great stream. And thank you everyone for your help too, by the way. A lot of people obviously have been using this stuff for a while. So that's super rad. Uh, and that's really, really helpful for me to add some charts and graphs into here too. So really cool, really cool stuff. Um, I need a mega graph that shows all the rides. Yeah, I mean, if I have the data, then we're good to go. Historically, I can do all the data. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, next week, I won't be here. I got some uh, some family in town. It's gonna be hanging out with them on Friday, so I will not be here. But I'll have some new stuff on my stuff. Yeah. Send you a screenshot from Lyft on SQL. Do it. Do it. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out and have a great weekend. And as always, you can follow me on the Twitters, on the YouTubes, all the stuff. And uh, thanks for all the great feedback. Thanks for the new subs. Thanks for the new follows. Have a good one. Bye-bye.